So let's talk about the concept of a guru. What is a guru and how does one find a guru? And why is it that different people have different gurus? Why is there, <laughs> like there's one god, there could be one guru, right? So, okay, everybody goes You're there. You're wrong, in India we have 36 million gods 36 and goddesses. Million, okay. <laughs> so, what is a guru? <laughs> the word guru mm -hmm. literally means, gu means darkness. Yeah. Ru means dispeller. Yeah. One who dispels your darkness is a guru. Yeah. You can call him a light bulb if you want. <laughs> yes, <okay. laughs> he's on, <Yeah>. that's all. <laughs> so, what you cannot see, he's able to make you see. Yeah. So, that's a guru. Yeah. Or, to put it in other terms, essentially because you're trying to make a journey mm -hmm. and you're seeking a guru, he's like a road map. He's yeah. like a live road map. Yeah. When you want to travel uncharted terrain, mm -hmm you will find it's extremely important. Road map is more than God. Mm -hmm. So, you will see in the tradition, guru is greater than God, all this they're saying because... because a live road map is more important than anything when you're lost in a unknown terrain. Yeah. yeah. So, can't I find my way without a guru? That's always the question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this question is coming from a certain egoistic standpoint. Why can't I do it myself? See, do one thing. Using a watch, right? Right. No, I'll give you easy. all the parts for the yeah. watch. Yeah. You build your own watch. <laughs> Let me see. Something, it's very yeah, simple. Okay. I'm not asking you to build yeah. a computer or a spacecraft. I'm just selling a simple thing like a yeah. watch. Most people have gotten rid of their watches today because they're looking at time in their cell phones or computers. Yeah. So, an obsolete instrument like this, yeah. I'll give you all the parts. You put it together. Let me see. Yeah. You may take a lifetime, I'm saying. Yeah. Something so simple. So, you go to your watchmaker for a watch. Yeah. So, what's your problem going to a guru for something that you do not know? <laughs> yeah, but there is something different here. Now, when I walk around Isha, as we'll see soon, I, what I notice among most people is, the closest I can describe it is devotion. Some people would call it worship. Now, when you find a guru, it's not an intellectual, I mean, it's not. Uh, making a watch could be an intellectual exercise. Yet, finding yourself or finding something divine or living in the divine, how much, what, what is this concept of difference? Where do you come in with devotion and worship? Can you, can your guru help you without a sense of divinity that you find in the guru? So, I've used three words, worship, devotion, <laughs> yeah. and non-intellectual. Yes. So, uh, yes, I don't know how to make a watch, but I could uh, transcend my present limitations and go into other dimensions. Why do I need to seek that kind of support, a subjective support? Yeah. Because a watch is something else. Yeah. The guru is dealing with you. Yes. Okay? Because you are the subject here, not uh, another object. So, the devotion that you see around, you must understand one thing, at no point are we teaching devotion? Are we encouraging devotion? But why do people seem to be so, you know, overwhelmed by the whole thing is... See, suppose you are in a desert and uh, let's say you're really thirsty, so thirsty that you thought you will die. And if somebody gave you a glass of water, would it be not natural for you to bow down to him? Yeah. You don't have thoughts, so oh, this is God, this is that, that is big if you are trained that way. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, simply as a human being, just out of gratitude, wouldn't you be overwhelmed and bow down to him? Yes. So what you see here is just that. Nobody has taught them that they should bow down, nobody has taught them they should be this way or that way. That is not at all encouraged. But because of what they have received, the overwhelming nature of what they have received, when that sense of overwhelming experience is happening within a human being, to bow down is a very, very natural thing. Yeah. So, why is it, I want to ask you this question, why okay. is it the moment somebody begins to think that he's an intellectual, he's against okay. devotion? I'm asking yeah. you, you're a filmmaker, could you make a good film without being devoted to it? No. There's no passion, there's no devotion, there's no film. There's you nothing can, beautiful happens in your life. No. So now the devotion is not exactly towards me as a person, yeah. but the devotion is 
towards me as a possibility in their life, yeah. not me as a person. So nobody creates anything truly worthwhile without being absolutely devoted to it. It cannot happen. Yes. 